That's who David Marples, who's a professor of Russian and East European history at the University of Alberta. He joins us live from Edmonton in Canada. Good to see you, David. Um, we've just been looking at uh, our correspondent there standing in pitch black there in Kyrgyzstan. Um, and he mentioned seven million people across Ukraine there with no water, no electricity and uh, no, no heating. What is the aim here of Russia as it continues to target critical uh, energy infrastructure? Well, it seems to me a straightforward war of terror mm -hmm. to try to bring Ukraine to its knees and force them to come to some kind of agreement. Um, it's an act of desperation, I would say, because quite clearly the Russian military on the ground has performed quite badly. And they've been pushed out of uh, several major centers now, including her son. So I think in response to the lack of success on the ground, Russia has decided to hit Ukraine very hard as winter approaches and try to reduce the country to um, sort of almost complete blackout so that there's no alternative but for Ukraine to try to, to come to some agreement. Uh, I think that some agreement right now would be the best thing for Russia. I don't see any advantage to continuing the war on the ground, which could last for years uh, without any conclusive result. But uh, some agreement is uh, possibly not what uh, Ukraine wants right now. Uh, but, but how does uh, Ukraine counter the, this you know, constant attack there on its infrastructure? What does the country need? And, and is it even possible to, to get that uh, w whatever it is, those facilities up and uh, going again or protected before the winter? Well, it is already, you know, winter. It is, we've already seen images of snow. Yeah, it's already started snowing in, in Kiev and some other places. And I, I think, you know, Ukrainian energy is based on nuclear power for about 60% of it and the rest on uh, hydro and thermal power. So the nuclear power plants are perhaps the most crucial uh, weapon that Ukraine has. And some of them are still working, particularly in the western part of the country, like Rivne and Melnitsky nuclear power stations. The other ones, um, you mentioned Zaporizhia already, um, South Ukraine is another big one at Mykolaiv. Um, it's very important that these continue some operations. So I think if Ukraine could manage to take Zaporizhia, um, just mm -hmm. a little north of her, and manage to take control over that plant again, yeah. it would be a big gain. That would be an important asset. Absolutely. Europe's largest uh, power plant there. And, and what does this do to morale you know, of people, as we say, no water, no electricity, no heating, and also for the dynamics uh, on the battlefield? You know, that one is difficult to say. Um, Zelensky has hinted that actually morale is very high mm -hmm. and that it's not going to be lowered by these kind of terrorist attacks. Um, I'm inclined to think that's true. I think Ukraine morale is very high. Uh, the population is very pleased with what's happening in the war, how Ukraine has responded. As long as Ukraine is constant, gets constant backing from Western countries, from other allies, uh, even maybe um, from some countries that have not allied with Ukraine so far, I think this is important now at this stage of the war. I also think it, it could be more of an international um, development as well in that United States and other countries could, in fact, uh, help here. The United States was talking to China the other day about the war, and it's quite clear that China is not happy mm. with, with the way the war is being continued. It's not in China's best interest. I think, you know, if some country like China or India could be brought on board, that would make the position much clearer. Uh, right now, uh, your country, Turkey and Israel, are acting admirably as mediators. And I think we do need some mediators, but we have to bring, um, you know, the really big powers also have to play a role here as well and not just United States. That's an important point to you raise. We'll end there, but thank you so much. Uh, great to get your analysis. Uh, David Marples speaking to us there from uh, the University of Alberta in uh, Canada. Thank you. Yeah.